Welcome to another edition of That's Good Football, where we have to dissect why the NFL rules make less sense than those established by some dictators. We're getting into the Matt Prater suspension. In 2011, Matt Prater, the kicker for the Denver Broncos, was arrested for a hit-and-run DUI. To be clear, he hit a parked car and nobody was hurt. His biggest mistake was hiding in a La Quinta Inn, so water under the bridge. But because of that incident, he is now subject to random alcohol tests by the NFL, which he tested positive for after having a couple beers at his home while on vacation. Those three Miller Highlifes ended up being the most expensive beers in human history, as they are going to cost Prater $705,000 this season. That seems fair, right? Prater drinks a couple legal beers in the privacy of his home, where he doesn't hurt anybody, and the NFL suspends him for four games, takes $705,000 of his money, and then pays it to Ray Rice during the two fewer games that he'll be suspended for publicly beating his fiance. There are some real brilliant people making decisions at the top of the NFL. Their philosophy is to treat players who make minor mistakes like criminals and to treat players who make criminal mistakes like minor offenders. You got it figured out, NFL. This is in addition to making the defensive rules so unfair that the NFL is now averaging 22 penalties per game. You're starting to make about as much sense as the US government, NFL. I don't even care that Prater is suspended. We'll be fine without him for four games. It's the reason he's suspended that doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. And according to Matt Prater's lawyer, Harvey Steinberg, he and Prater were grateful for the four-game suspension as the NFL originally wanted to suspend him for an entire year. A year for drinking a couple beers in his house. A league that is sponsored by Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, and God knows how many other beer companies wanted to suspend a player for a year for drinking a product that the NFL makes hundreds of millions of dollars from every year? Fuck you, NFL. Matt Prater made a stupid mistake three years ago when he got his DUI. So he had to enter the league's alcohol program. That's fair enough. I'm glad that there's a program there, especially for guys who need help with uh, alcohol abuse. But Prater has been forced to be in the program for three years and the NFL is dictating what legal substances he can put in his body in his spare time. Legal substances, not banned NFL substances, legal. Um, you made a mistake, Mr. Prater, and for that, uh, we don't want you to have any fun in your personal life for as long as you play in the NFL. We have a zero tolerance policy for alcohol and drug abusers. Unless those drugs are injected by our doctors to mask serious pain, ultimately putting you at risk for more serious injuries. Also, feel free to take as many organ-harming painkillers as you'd like. And if you happen to be physically violent towards women, off of the field, we're mostly cool with that. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. The saddest part is they have forced Prater to shame himself and publicly apologize for doing something every person in this country can legally do when they turn 21. How would you feel if your employer took $705,000 out of your pocket for drinking a few beers at home? Shit, how many of you have shown up to work hungover or still a little drunk? Uh, all of us, every single one of us. And I actually did pretty good work on all of those days. The alcohol abuse program should be a good thing for NFL players, and maybe 99% of the time it is. Maybe this is the small instance where it's failed, but I do not believe a program designed to help players should be used as a tool to punish them when they mess up. Matt Prater did not mess up. He did not get another DUI. That's the reason he is in the program. Why does he have to agree to not drink at all? Shouldn't the program be designed to help him manage how to drink more responsibly? Isn't that what they say at the end of almost every beer commercial? Drink responsibly? 
Is that exactly what he was doing? Yes, it was! He was not fucking drinking and driving again. So, maybe instead of taking uh, an obscene amount of money from him and hurting the Denver Broncos, you should, uh... Figure out a better solution on how to handle this situation. Maybe I'm defending an alcoholic, and maybe that's the wrong thing to do. But I feel like some of his personal freedoms are being violated in this situation. Now, we can bear partial responsibility for this whole uh, debacle. Because we all hold NFL players to higher standards than we hold ourselves to. Thus, allowing the NFL to do the same in the name of keeping dignity to their brand. But if I was going out every week and putting my body in jeopardy so the NFL could make billions of dollars every year, I would be furious if they told me I couldn't drink a beer in my goddamn house or smoke a legal joint to ease the pain of my broken down body. And in fact, encourage me to take more addicting and harmful painkillers to subdue the pain that goes along with playing in the NFL. There's nothing I can do except bitch about the bullshit I see in a sport I love. Uh, it doesn't help anything, but it, it makes me feel a little bit better. Thanks for watching. That's good sports. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and to write your angry letters to Roger Goodell. Um, you know, just make sure you use some big words so he thinks that you know what you're talking about. And let's change this game for the better. That's good sports. Change. We can believe it. That's how you should end your letter.